Something I think about a lot is how magical my first playthrough of Skyrim was. Picture this, it was Christmas time in 2011 and I'd just gotten my first console ever. Video games were something that I had been voyeuristically interested in for years, but until I got my corny Modern Warfare themed Xbox 360 with startup noises that made me feel like the captain of the Enterprise, I barely had any experience with them outside of a few titles on the Wii and a stint with Wizard 101. I mean, basically anything that started with a W was fair play actually. Webkins, World of Goo, who knows, maybe I had some issues, we can unpack that later, but moral of the story is that I was young, filled with excitement and wonder, and absolutely overjoyed to step into the wacky world of Tamriel. And that fateful first day that I launched the game immediately formed a core memory for me. It is so nostalgic and joyous that I've already spoken about it briefly on other videos on my channel, and it is the remembrance of this first day as a high elf in Helgen that keeps me coming back to replay Skyrim almost every year since then. You know when you do the same thing over and over again, hoping that you get a different result? What's that called again? But ever since that first playthrough, each subsequent playthrough feels a bit empty. Like there's something tugging on my brain, reminding me that it won't be as full an experience this time around. Reminding me that I can't truly experience that level of joy and wonder with Skyrim ever again. And this thought has plagued me for years, not just in Skyrim, but in every game that I've come to love in my career as a gamer. See mom, it is a career. And it's not to say that I don't still feel the same magic when I play games, because I definitely still do. Like, the first time that I realized the breath of Elden Ring, the first time the World Serpent spoke to me in God of War, the fact that Animal Crossing released on my 21st birthday in the middle of a global pandemic, unironically saving me from near certain depression. I mean, thank God for virtual bug collection. Video games have an inherent magic, and it's part of the reason that I truly love them, as dorky as it is to say that. But the truth of the matter is that I will never be 10 again, playing Skyrim while the snow falls silently behind me in rural Vermont with the smell of cookies wafting through the air. And not to be dramatic, but that sucks ass. <laughs> Today I want to explore how, over time, the amount of magic you feel with a game diminishes until it eventually starts to feel as routine as brushing the old teeth. But most of all, I want to figure out how we can recapture that magic and reclaim that childlike wonder that keeps us coming back to gaming after all these years. Today, we'll explore the magic of playing a game for the first time. Now first, I want to talk a little bit about nostalgia, which is the driving force behind why games feel so magical when we look back. For me, it's always been a visceral feeling, and I first remember feeling this way in the summer before high school when I was already starting to get nostalgic about Skyrim. I think I was nervous for the shift from middle school, a school that I had been at since literally before kindergarten. I mean, remember, there are not a ton of schools in Vermont. And I found myself wishing that I could go back to that cozy winter's day where I was entranced by Tamriel. In my mind, nothing seemed safer or more serene. It had been, what, a year and a half? And I was already feeling this intense nostalgia for this game as a means of seeking comfort when faced with the chilling ambiguity of high school. And now finally, after years of feeling nostalgic almost every day of my life, I've finally done some reading to determine where the phrase even comes from. It turns out the condition was considered a mental disorder in the 1600s, which just adds to the reasons that I'd be absolutely fucked if I lived that. Essentially, a physician named Johannes Hoffer wanted to diagnose the feeling that soldiers felt when they wanted to go home. He coined the phrase nostalgia, deemed it a cerebral disease, and called a day. Which I feel like seems like kind of a harsh diagnosis for soldiers who are trying to escape literal war and return to the comfort of their homes. Oh, you don't like being inches away from death every day? Yeah, that's textbook mental disorder. So comparing soldiers escaping certain death to a young Meraki who was afraid of high school doesn't exactly make me look brave, but let's focus on the brain here. Neurologists have since deemed nostalgia to be a longing for a sanitized impression of the past, essentially meaning whenever we're faced with uncertainty or when we're unhappy with where we're at in life, we can escape to these memories of when life was good. But the important word there is sanitized. Sanitized means that we're seeing the past as the best version that it could be, ignoring the downsides that we might have actually experienced at the time as a means of coping. 
And it wasn't until I was reading this that I had my own revelation. I was sanitizing my own memory of Skyrim in a major way. You see, that same year that I got an Xbox and I played Skyrim for the first time was also the year that my mom spent Christmas in the hospital. And of course, I remember that. I remember being terrified. And as my dad so perfectly knew, Skyrim was the perfect escape from the depressing and scary reality of Christmas that year. And it's likely only because of how bad things were in real life that I was able to get truly lost in Skyrim's world, pretending that I was there as a means of forgetting how scared I was in real life. And thankfully, my mom recovered fully, and it's not a memory that I've repressed by any means, but I never ever seem to associate that first player through of Skyrim with that sad, scary reality of Christmas that year. And this is due to nostalgia protecting and sanitizing the memory of Skyrim, the game that saved me from spiraling out of control at age 12. Through the lens of nostalgia, we sanitize these memories of the past and view them through rose-colored glasses that keep the memories we hold dear pure. So my first playthrough of Skyrim wasn't as good as I remember it to be, but it was still an extremely important memory for me. But nostalgia isn't just a purely bad thing that meddles with our memory and distorts our perception of reality. In fact, most modern psychiatrists don't even call it a cerebral disease as Johannes did. They go as far as to see some benefits in those with anxiety and those who are feeling lonely or depressed. It's like going to your happy place, except you're just remembering the good times from your past. And I'm still extremely nostalgic to this day, and it's probably due to the fact that I am terrified for the future, but whoa, let's not get too deep today. So maybe my first playthrough of Skyrim wasn't as perfect and flawless as I remember it, and we have stupid Johannes to blame for that, but does that mean that I'm doomed to be chasing the memory of my first playthrough of a game every time I sit down to replay it? I hated this thought, so I sat down and I worked on the idea until I formulated three ways that I could rekindle and refresh my love for these old games. And because I am such a kind and generous soul, and some people are calling me a saint, I'm gonna share them with you today. The first method was one that I was using subconsciously for years, but without a lot of success. The first time I played Skyrim, I was a stealth archer. Todd Howard basically demands that you play this way at least once, and it had to be some of the most fun that I ever had. But in my consecutive playthroughs, even though I'd start as a mage or a two-handed bloodthirsty orc or a Khajiit with a raging skooma addiction, I'd always fall back to my old ways. And I'd somehow find myself in the possession of a bow, pressing my left thumbstick and... Oh man, I'm no better than a skooma addict, am I? I was addicted to being a stealth archer because it was how I remembered Skyrim. But finally, in the year of 2020, I made a new character that was a battle mage. And I remember vowing to myself that I wouldn't use stealth and that this would be my first playthrough to break the stealth archer addiction. And I miraculously stuck to it. I beat the entire story, I finally played through the College of Winterhold, and I started to experience the game in an entirely new light. By forcing myself to see the game through this different lens, I once again felt that childlike wonder that I felt the first time I played. And sure, it wasn't quite the same, but Damn, it was close. So my first tip to finding the magic is to approach the game in a different way. It can be as small as a different playstyle, like putting down the bow and picking up the wizard staff, or it can be more drastic, like installing enough mods to turn your PC into a space heater and making Skyrim look a bit more like a nightmare about a children's show. It can also be as simple as a mentality thing, like maybe engaging with the story by really listening to the plotline with intent, talking to every character for additional context, and reading one of the books that only an insane person named Brian would ever actually take the time to read. Ah, uh, the Elder Scrolls. I absolutely rekindled my love for another favorite game of mine, The Lord of the Rings Online, by doing a similar thing and reading all the quest dialogue. The more rocks you turn over in games, the more you'll discover underneath. And by taking a different approach to playing, you're more likely to appreciate your favorite game in a different light and unlock some of the magic that you thought was lost. The next tip I have is a bit more obvious, but I found it to be just as effective. I used to have this bad habit of trying to play The Witcher again every summer, hoping that I'd feel a revitalized urge to explore the game's world and turn over some of those aforementioned rocks, find something new, fall in love again, yada yada, you know the drill. But 
It ended up playing more like a scene from my childhood where we'd go to the orchard and I'd, I'd try to have fun playing apples, or in this case, slaughtering monsters with my sharpened blade and even sharper wit, and I'd burn out after just a few hours. A year sounds like a long time in my head, but even though each summer I felt the calling to return to The Witcher, Sometimes it's a call that you have to decline. I've realized that I tend to feel nostalgic for games every time the season that I originally played them in rolls around. Maybe that's because I'm from Vermont where each season is intense and slightly traumatic, but there's a reason every fall I look at Dota 2 in my Steam library and I think, maybe, I mean, unless. Of course, that leads to a stern conversation in the mirror because friends don't let friends play MOBAs, but the moral here is to resist nostalgia from time to time. It's all based on this theme of delayed gratitude, which I know sounds like something you'd hear about in the crowd of a Tony Robbins talk, but it honestly does hold some truth. If you give in to the first time you feel nostalgic and play the game that you feel nostalgic for, two things are gonna happen. First, you will burn out quickly. All the things that bothered you the first time will stick out and the thing that you like won't feel as interesting and you won't feel incentivized to push through the pain and explore again. Going back and revisiting a game that you've already played requires a slight bit of memory loss and you're either gonna need time or brain damage or excessive drinking to solve that problem. Now, I usually opt for time, but hey, Pick your poison. The second thing that happens is that you'll reset the cycle and you'll push back the date for when the game will truly feel new again even further. In Dishonored, I beat the game back in 2012 like a good Bethesda fanboy, but I lied to myself and I thought I was ready to try it again in 2013, in 2014, took a two year break until 2016, and still, I'd boot up the game, play for a few hours, and then quit. It had been four years at that point since I had originally played through, and that would have been plenty of time traditionally, but because I kept coming back like a mindless drone, I kept moving the goalposts further and further. Had I just taken that four year break in the first place, I'm sure it would have felt like an oasis in the desert, but I wasn't smart enough to see that context. So. Be strong and ask yourself if you're really ready for another playthrough the next time you feel that urge to revisit Fallout or Breath of the Wild or Metal Gear Solid. Sometimes just taking a year away from the game to grow as a person or try new games, and most importantly forget the last time that you played the game, can be the difference between another failed playthrough and another time seeing the serendipitous credit sequence. Now, the last piece of sage advice that I'm gonna impart on you is to share. And I know this might sound like a kindergarten lesson, but it turns out that Miss Levine did have some good advice after all. Single-handedly, one of the absolute best ways that I've rekindled the magic of a game is not by even replaying it, but by forcing my friend or my brother to play it while I watch. And sure, sometimes you have to hold them at gunpoint, but they'll eventually learn to love it. Let me give you an example, and again, we're gonna talk about Skyrim. Wow. It's almost like it had a profound impact on my childhood. A few years after my first playthrough, things were getting stale between me and the old ball of chain, which at the time was a physical copy of Elder Scrolls, so I conned my brother into accidentally playing through the first few hours of Skyrim through a series of elaborate half-truths and empty promises. Now, my brother is a gamer, but he is a gamer with a lowercase g. He likes games like FIFA and COD, like a man. Skyrim is a little bit off the beaten trail for him, but I know a cognitive bias when I see one. After getting my brother to create a character and experience that magical moment when the game literally unbinds your hands and you literally escape captivity to explore the entire world of Skyrim, you wittily, <clears throat> literally start pogging and that childlike wonder that you remember begins to set in for the both of you. By having my brother play, I was able to vicariously play through Skyrim for the first time again, and it was perhaps the closest that I felt to my first playthrough since that original day back in 2011. There's also something to be said about the joy of sharing the things you love with the people you love, but I'll save that thought for my next session with Dr. Stevens. H however you frame it, watching your friend or your relative play through your most beloved games is an amazing experience, and it's extremely rewarding to ha get a friend hooked on one of your favorite titles so you can watch them enjoy the good parts and laugh at the bad parts and lose countless hours of their life to pixels on a screen. So even though it might take some bargaining, some begging, and perhaps even some bamboozling, go and buy your friends a copy of your favorite game. You will rekindle that fire that made the game so fresh and new, and you'll have a new shared experience and core memory that will only strengthen your relationship with that person and honestly probably with that game as well.
So there are a few ways to find the lost magic of playing a game for the first time, but I have two final words of wisdom that I'd like to share. The first is to just take a second to appreciate the next time you're playing through a game and you begin to feel that magic and wonder. Remember that that feeling is something that you'll honestly probably be cherishing with nostalgia for years to come and take a moment to stop and smell the roses. Don't rush through dialogue boxes, don't forget to explore that cave that might be a bit of a detour, and don't forget to murder Maven Blackbriar in cold blood the first time you see her. Second, I just want to say that it's okay to feel nostalgic about experiences from your past. It could be something as small as your bad day at school, but it's okay to reminisce and think about times when life was truly simple and serene. With that being said, Never make the mistake of thinking that those days are fully behind you, because there are newer, bigger, and better games getting released all the time, and there are countless amazing titles that I'm sure you've never played. The solution to feeling trapped by nostalgia is to go out and forge new memories, whether you're doing so in the wacky world of gaming or in the goofy world of IRL. <laughs> and that's just about all I have to say about that. Like I said, this is a thought that I have had all the time for like the past 10 years and I'd be curious to hear if you guys feel the same or if I'm just an insane person. So let me know in the comments down below and I will see you gamers in the next one. Until next time, this has been Meraki, bye bye.